fall is in the air here in Alaska. It is crisp and cool this morning. And in this video, I'm gonna be showing you a bunch of different things filmed over a couple weeks span to show you what fall is like here in Alaska. We have had nonstop rain for like a month. It really has been raining a ton. So I am relishing this sunshine this morning, but we do love fall in Alaska. It means harvesting the garden, the leaves changing. So I hope you enjoy coming along and experiencing a little bit of fall in Alaska. Here is our potato patch. It looks like it's done fairly well this year. We will be harvesting this probably in another couple weeks. We usually wait for a hard frost before we harvest our potatoes, but we'll see. We'll see when it happens. You just never know when you're gonna have the time. Last year, we got a really early snow and we were digging them out of the snow. So hopefully we'll avoid that this year. One thing that is bittersweet for our family in the fall is my parents go back to Arizona for the winter. My dad has been working tirelessly the last week to get everything buttoned up from a summer full of adventures in the motorhome and his travel trailer. There's a lot to pack up outside. There's a lot to pack up inside so that the apartment is ready to Airbnb for the winter. So we're all in that process of transitioning over. Okay, dad, will you share with us what you do to get the motorhome and trailer ready for winter? Well, because both of them got water in them, uh, there's, there's a hot water, there's sinks, there's toilets. So the first thing we have to do is drain all the water out of them. And uh, there's some of them have uh, valves that can do it. Uh, some of them you just flush until it's empty or open all the taps. And then I have my compressor and a big long hose and I go in and I blow out all of the lines to get as much water as I can out of everything. And when I'm satisfied that I've got enough water out of it, I then go and get uh, about uh, 15 gallons of antifreeze and I start pouring antifreeze in the sinks, in the toilet, in the shower, in the tanks, uh, that hold, any tanks that hold water. And uh, therefore, I'm hoping that uh, if it freezes, or well, we know it's going to freeze here, it's going to be 20, 30, 40 below maybe, uh, we'll uh, have antifreeze in there so it won't break the pipes or break the valves. And we do the same to all the other equipment, but uh, that's what we do here. Disconnect all the batteries so that there's no power going through them. In a motorhome, I don't have to do that. There's just a master kill switch. So there's no power and nobody can turn anything on. Uh, if they do, they're gonna get uh, antifreeze instead of water. And then last of all, he covers them with these huge, what are these called? Tarps. Tarps to protect them from snow and ice so that they'll be ready to go next spring. Just have to do the reverse in the spring, drain all the antifreeze out, blow it out, and uh, close all the valves and uh, put some water in it and we're ready to go. Thanks, Dad. Well, Grandpa's hard at work here. Grandma and I are gonna spend our day together before she leaves. First stop for mom and I is to get pedicures, but the only problem is that we like the same person. Her name is Lone, and she's the only one that we let do our pedicures, so we have to go one after another. I don't do much to pamper myself, but I do really love a good pedicure every few months. Grandma and I were able to spend this day together because yes, Everett did start kindergarten and he is doing so well. He was so excited to get to go to school with Bennett and Weston. Mark and I took him into class the first day and he got right to work coloring. After a few pictures with mom and dad, we slipped out and are excited to see all the things he's going to learn this year at school. The Kizzix we ordered for Bennett and Everett didn't quite fit the first time. Thankfully, they have a free return policy. We were able to send them back free of charge and order some new ones. There are some things that we love about these shoes. The boys, Weston and Hunter. Everett actually has, oh. this is actually Everett's second pair and he loves his. I'm gonna show you something really what cool about them though. Can you show them your favorite thing so that you know which foot to put it on? Just let me get this off. Okay. Out. So these are gonna be your gym shoes. And, oh, I will keep them home. Or at home, yep. One stays at school, one stays at home. That's why you needed two pairs. Because pretty soon you're gonna be wearing your 
snow boots to school and then you have to change into tennis shoes when you get there. Ready? Oh, it's stuck. They come into these really cool boxes that open up, and then that's how you send them back if you need to. They just go back into the box. Okay. That's yours, Bennett. Oh, okay. big. Blue. Ooh, they're really nice. And so, this is a really special scene. Now, well, I just have to connect to the monsters, and then I'm going to slip, and then I'm going to write shoes. So for little kids, they put a monster inside, and if the monster is closed, or if the monster is connected, is connected then they know they have the right shoe on. And remember, these are no-tie shoes, so they just slip in. Yeah. They have this technology on the back that allows them to slide their foot in, hands-free. Okay, let me put some socks on you first. We don't want to get them smelly right away. Here. Okay. And you have to get a little bit of paper out of the shoe. Shoe? That? Sometimes it's hard, but it's fine. Okay, let's see you put them on. Just ask your parents. Just ask for help. Yeah. Okay, let's see you put them on. Ah. Ah, ah, ah. One feels tighter. I thought it was already tied. Yep. Ah. One yes. shoe on. Actually, I have to take okay. well, You got to make sure they're the right. Yeah. Ooh, Bennett, those look nice. Mine too. Yours look really nice, Everett. Yeah. Oh, hands free. But sometimes hands are not free. <laughs> there you go. Let's uh, see how you run with them. Oh, no, first dance. Yeah, dance first. Let's see your dance. Da, 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 da. Now, let me okay. <laughs> okay. Ah! So if you have problems getting your shoes tied, these are perfect. We do have a discount code down in the description below. One thing we always try and do before fall comes is take any berries we have left in the freezer from last year and turn them into syrup. So last night we got out all the blueberries. I was too tired to get out the camera. So we took three gallons of blueberries last night and thawed them out. We used this thing right here, which is called a... It is called a Mehu Maija. I'm not sure what it is, but it's really cool. It has a lid, a steamer pot, a juice kettle, a drain tube, and then a water kettle. So you put the water in the bottom, your fruit up here, and then as it steams, you get the juice to come out of this tube. Here's the remnants of the blueberries. The juice came out of this tube. And now we have it mixed with sugar and corn syrup. That is what we use to make blueberry syrup. I've got to watch it really carefully now that it's starting to boil. It has to boil for 15 minutes. This is batch two and three that I'm doing. Here's batch number one of blueberry syrup. And like I said, this will be batch two and three. Mark is so excited. He just loves this stuff so much. It's his mom's recipe and um, it's kind of a staple, but we haven't had it for a while. So we're restocking for the year ahead. I have to keep stirring or it will overflow. The next step is to skim the foam off the top after it boiled for 15 minutes. But don't worry, this does not go to waste. You just toast up some bread and put some butter on it and then put the foam on it and it is fantastic. So we have clean sterilized bottles that we did here in the dishwasher. And then we just fill them, they're still hot, and then we fill them with the hot blueberry syrup. Well, this is gonna be really hot when I hold this. That's true. I need to grab it up here. Daddy, you want to see? Other than Ryan, Ryan. We can collect a bunch of pennies. You get the next one? We ended up with a really nice stock of blueberry syrup. As you can see, the boys are already really enjoying it on their pancakes. 
because this has a high enough sugar content and we sterilize the bottles, they should be just fine. We don't have to process them in any way. We actually have even a few more bottles downstairs in the food storage, but these are the pretty ones. So <laughs> these ones stayed out and now we're set for blueberry syrup for the year. It's one of our favorite things to do with the Alaska huckleberries that we pick. We do keep some to make pies and other things, but blueberry syrup is Mark's favorite. So that's where the majority of our blueberries ends up. Hello friends, it's a rainy morning around here, but the raspberries need to get picked. In Alaska, we have wild huckleberries, we have blueberries, which grow in the tundra down low, and then we have raspberries grow really well. We actually don't have blackberries. I think some people plant blackberries in their yards, but we don't naturally have blackberries. We do have wild raspberries, but this is our raspberry patch. It is huge. You've probably seen it when I've done aerial shots. It's about one, two, three, four, five rows deep. Um, the raspberries are doing okay this year. My mom has been picking them while we were out of town, but this morning, I'm going to give it a valiant effort and pick the patch so that we can make some raspberry jam for the year. That's what I do with them. I freeze them to use throughout the year in recipes, and then we make raspberry freezer jam. So if you're picking raspberries, make sure you lift up the leaves and look under. Uh, when we used to, we used to open this up as a you pick raspberry farm and people would come and pick and um, they would do what we call cherry picking. They'd pick like one or two on this bush, one or two on this bush. We try and pick the entire bush before we move on to the next one, but you gotta look up under the leaves. You can put it in my bucket. Look at this. This is what, this is what the, look like. That red thing in my hand is what they look like. Um, and that tastes really good. I have a basket full of berries. The boys all came out and helped. They've got their own little baskets. Let's take a quick look in the garden. You guys know I am a very lazy gardener. I don't have a ton of time to put into my garden and the weeds have taken over. But all of our veggies last night for dinner, broccoli, cauliflower, and our salad were from the garden. So we're still eking things out even though I have put zero effort into it in the last few weeks. So I cut these broccoli. There's a few more little broccolis growing. I just need to do a little weeding around these. Uh, we do have some nice cabbages coming along. This one is really nice and beautiful. I came in here to pick these raspberries that are growing through the fence. Ooh, that's a beautiful one. That's a moldy one. We have been, even with the weeds, we have been harvesting tons of lettuce. Got some pretty purple cabbages over here growing. We harvest cabbages at the end of the summer. And then we've got some beautiful of these cheddar cauliflower in here. Growing. Another one. This one's nice and big. There's a white one somewhere. Oh no. What happened to it? Oh, the boys must have stepped on it, darn it. Put a little white one in there. Do have some bunch of little squash growing in there. And then we actually have an acorn squash right here, which I'm excited about. Didn't know if that would even come of anything, but we got a little one. We did, we did eat about seven zucchini out of the garden. So it's not a total failure. I just need to prioritize it better if I want a better garden. And this year has not been the year to do that. All right, the jam, the raspberries are now being turned into raspberry freezer jam. We made you four, made, made four batches. That was quick. Just mixing it. The jam is already starting to set up before I can even get it into my jars and things. So that's a good sign that we did the pectin right. Here is our jam from this morning. Pretty good for an hour of picking. I remember when I first started making jam, it felt very overwhelming. Now I know it's just like an hour and a half picking, smashing, stirring, 
and then we can have jam for the whole year. So I'm glad that's checked off the list. I tried to make eight to 10 batches of jam every fall to keep us stocked in the freezer for the year ahead. Whew, you guys. We have reached a point in the summer where I am just feeling the weight of the nonstop go, 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 go. I'm tired. It's been raining for days, so I'm chilled and cold. Oh, my kitty, my kitty came. I started talking and she jumped down. Hi, sweetheart. You wanna say hello? You wanna say hello? Thank you. All I could think about was taking a bath because I've just been chilled from being out in the rain. And then when we stopped at the P.O. box, there was this beautiful box from Bend Soap Co. They sent me an email saying, hey, we would love to send you some of our top products. They are for people with sensitive skin. They are all natural goat's milk products. I said, yes, I would love to try them out. So, <laughs> Luna agrees. This is a great thing to try out. So look at this gorgeous packaging, first of all. It, this was the box inside the box. I already opened the outside box and it says, natural skincare lovers, this one's for you. Yes, Luna's gonna check it all out too. Let me change the camera so that you guys can see it. We're gonna open it together. It seems perfect because I was gonna take a bath anyways. So hopefully there's something to take a bath in. Show your skin some love. Three out of my four kids seem to have very sensitive skin, uh, especially Weston and Everett and Bennett. So three of them, like I said. So let's see, we have oatmeal and honey eczema relief. Then we have the unscented version. This one is oatmeal and honey. They all smell great. These are just little ones. And these are from Bend Oregon, obviously Bend Soap Co. And they have goat's milk, coconut, olive, and palm oil. That's it. Very simple ingredients. Excited to try those out. Then we have some chapstick. We have unscented eucalyptus spearmint and sweet orange burst. I'm gonna try the orange one. Okay. Now this is a small family owned company. Mm. Yum. That is amazing. Cute little family with like eight beautiful children. I love the little goats on all their stuff. Look at that cute little goat up there. Using goat's milk, which I know we had goats for several years and I know goat's milk is amazing for everything. Wrote me a cute little note. We're excited to share our all natural products with you and your family. We hope you have a life changing experience like so many others have. We are getting into fall and winter when my kids skin really, really struggles when it gets cold and chapped. So this is gonna come in really handy. Let's see what else is in this box. Oatmeal and honey luxury milk bath. There we go, this is what I'm gonna be using. Luxury milk bath. Very, very light scent, which is perfect. And then we've got Smoothing Solve Unscented. I think this is like a balm that you can you know, put on your dry skin, which you guys, I'm really excited about all these if I can get it open. <laughs> I'm so tired. Just open for me. Oh, you guys, it was so simple. Oh, so it's like a little salt. Unscented. Just feels nice. All right, so then we have goat milk lotion, unscented. They're after my own heart. I tend to not love a lot of scent and thing. Sometimes I do, other times I don't. I guess I'm just picky. And then full size bars of soap. Wow, thank you, Ben Soap Co. I'm gonna try these things out, I'll let you know. You know, it's gonna take me a couple months to use them with the boys, then I can come back and tell you how we like them. So, oh, Luna's here to check them all out. Yeah, what do you think? If you or anyone in your family have sensitive skin, need good all natural products, I think this is a winner. So check them out. I will link their website down in the description below. Small family business, beautiful products, beautiful packaging. 
Thank you so much for sending these to me and I hope that you guys will check them out too. Now excuse me while I go take my oatmeal and honey luxury milk bath. Add a handful or two to your bath water and watch it turn a milky white. Soak for as long as you like and enjoy baby soft skin. For a velvety foam finish, just turn on the jets. Well, I don't have jets, but I'm gonna enjoy the milky goodness. Ugh. It's hard for me to admit that fall and winter are on the way, but this weather is helping my brain like, ooh, and the fireweed, it's turned to white fluff. I'm gonna have to show you guys that. All right, friends. It was too late last night when I got out of my bath to film, but my skin was so soft. It felt so good. Those goat milk soaps, amazing. Anyways, just thought I'd come back on and tell you. I seriously was like, got in bed and I was like, ooh, I just feel so soft and it just felt so nice. Amazing. Berries, back to school, and a nice warm bath were the theme of this fall video. This is just the beginning of fall in Alaska and we can't wait to show you what other adventures we have in store. Thank you so much for being here. We are so grateful for each and every one of you that spends time with us. We love you and we'll see you again real soon for more of This Alaska Life.